Hello, welcome back to Heart Breathings and another Notion walkthrough. I am so excited for this video. I have been working really hard over the last couple of months to integrate Notion and some digital tools with my beloved paper planning, and it is really starting to work. So I want to give you a little sneak peek of what we're going to be looking at today, which is this content creation hub where I am magically bringing together two separate brands, all of my social media, two separate YouTube channels and my newsletters and planning them in one master calendar that I can also coordinate with my assistant or operations manager. And this has been changing the game. So I'm excited to share it with you today. So let's get started. <laughs> Social media is such a huge part of my business. In fact, both my businesses, I have two brands. I have the Heart Breathings brand here, and I also have my Sarah Cannon author brand. And I honestly have built my social media just off of posting kind of whatever, whenever I feel like it, whenever I feel inspired. But I know without a doubt that if I was more strategic about my social media, I would get better results and better connections with my fans without having to post as often as I am. But honestly, it has been such a difficult thing for me to plan ahead. And I feel like finally with Notion, I'm starting to get a handle on it. So it's really been all about deciding on some systems and setting things up in a way that is really going to support me. And I'm excited to show you how that's working in Notion. But before we get started, I'm also really excited to talk to you today about Mint Mobile, my partner for today's video. Obviously, we as writers and creatives do so much work on our phones. I read on my phone. I'm posting to Instagram, Facebook. I check my emails on my phone. I am pretty much doing a lot of my business day to day on my phone. So I need wireless service that is really great. But why is it so expensive? So many plans out there are very expensive, but it doesn't have to be. Mint Mobile offers premium wireless service for as low as $15 a month without sacrificing your coverage, your speed, or your data. And in fact, George and I are switching our family over to Mint Mobile and we are saving so much money as a family. You might already be familiar with Mint Mobile because of all those funny ads with Ryan Reynolds, who is also part owner and who I actually adore. <laughs> but what you might not know is that Mint Mobile is actually built on the nation's largest 5G network. And the reason that they're able to keep their costs so low is because they don't have retail stores and direct salespeople and everything is done online, which I actually prefer because I hate having to drive to talk to someone in customer service. I just want to be able to get someone on the phone or on the internet and be able to order everything I need and get great customer service that way. So all of Mint Mobile's plans have unlimited nationwide talk and text, lightning fast 5G service, as well as mobile hotspot. Also, for a limited time, you can use my link to get 50% off their unlimited plan, which gives you the unlimited service for only $15 a month, which is just such a great price. Also, you can sign up for their modern family plan with just two lines. So you might want to check out all those options when you click on the link. Switching to Mint Mobile is super easy and it usually only takes about 15 minutes. So 15 minutes to get your unlimited wireless plan for only $15. Honestly, it's such a great deal, and I'm very excited to bring that to you today. You can use my link, trymintmobile.com slash heartbreathings to get started. You can scan the QR code, also will take you to the same page, or I will leave that link down in the description for you. It definitely helps out my channel if you use my links when you make that switch. And if you decide to make the switch, let me know in the comments. But I really want to say thank you to Mint Mobile for partnering with me today. And now let's get back to our overview of of Notion. When I first started thinking about how I was going to set this up in Notion, I knew it was going to be quite a task because like I said, I have two separate brands, which means that I have two Instagrams, two websites, two Facebook pages, lots of different Facebook groups, two YouTube channels, and it's a lot to try to manage. And even a lot of schedulers don't let you use two different ones and it can get a little bit overwhelming. 
Also, Notion in and of itself, though it is really powerful and such a great tool, can feel a little bit overwhelming when you're first setting it up. So what I started with was listing out all of the different social medias where I wanted to keep track of what I was posting so that I knew kind of what I was looking for my tool to do for me. Like what did I want to put into Notion? What did I want to track? And how did I want to get started on planning it? Then I made a list of what exactly did I need Notion to be able to manage for me. So I use paper planners all the time. So I'm using those to strategize. I didn't necessarily need Notion to be able to strategize and write out my ideas, but I did need a place that I could easily keep and be able to search through any video ideas I had where I could keep my outlines, where I could put my thumbnails and I could put title ideas and I could write out series and be able to link to extra resources. So I just made a big list of all the things that I wanted to be able to do in Notion. And then I took out, I feel like this is always so ironic, but I took out a paper planner to start mapping out how I wanted it to look so that when I go into my notion, I wasn't overwhelmed with just the possibilities of everything that you could do there. Okay, so let's dive into what this looks like. Today, I'm just going to be sharing with you a walkthrough of this space and how I'm using it. My next video will be an in-depth tutorial on how to set up something like this for yourself. And then I'm also going to have a video coming up talking about how do I decide and plan what in the world to actually post on social media, which will not be a notion video, but just more of a social media for writers or entrepreneur in general. So let's get started on this. So I have created a page in my notion that is integrated both in my personal notion, which is free, but also in my team notion, which is something that I pay for so that my uh, operations manager can also use this page. But if you're just using notion for yourself, it's totally free, which is very cool. So I have this content creation hub where I have these cards here, one for each sort of content bucket. And I'll talk about that in a second. Then I have a master content calendar that I can actually change the view on based on whether I want to look at just my Sarah Cannon brand or my Sarah Cannon and my Heart Breathings brand. Because as I explained in the intro, I have two brands and this may not be your situation, but it also, there's probably some of you out there who do have multiple brands. I have my Sarah Cannon brand, which is my author brand. And then also my Heart Breathings brand, which is this YouTube channel and all the courses and social media that go with that. So here I can look at the master calendar and see at a glance everything that I'm posting from YouTube to social media and beyond. Or I can click on Sarah Cannon and just see posts for that brand. Or I can click on Heart Breathings and just see posts for that brand. There are also other views that you can use in Notion, such as this timeline view. There's a Kanban board view. There's also just a plain old list view if I just wanted to see a list of all my content and not see it on a calendar. All of this is in the same database. The difference is that I have that database tagged with whether something is a Sarah Cannon video. So here you can see this particular card says HBYT, meaning Heart Breathings YouTube, whereas this card has SCYT, meaning it's tagged as Sarah Cannon YouTube. So when I go through here, I can choose filters that allow me to see whether it's a Sarah Cannon video or a Heart Breathings video. So that filters and tags allow me to take the same master database and see it in different ways and filter out some of the information, which makes it super useful. And in fact, one of the cool things about this particular setup and about Notion in general is just that you can create something once like a master calendar, and then you can use these filters, tags, your status and other properties to properly filter it out so that you can see it on multiple different pages. And those databases communicate really well with each other. Let me show you a little bit about what I mean. So if I go over here and pull out this menu to the side and I click on my private notion, this is the one that's free. So this is private. No one else can see or get in here. I have my daily dashboard and everything. And if you love the way this looks or you want to set something up similar to yourself, I have a detailed walkthrough on exactly how to set this up. So I will link that for you down below where I talked about how to set up my goals and tasks here in Notion. 
but I also have a writing log in here. I have a to-do list. And then over here on the side, you can see I have my content calendar. This is the same content calendar in terms of the database and all of the information that we just saw on my team Notion content hub. And that is what I love about Notion is you can take the same database and you can link it in multiple places. And I think that's where the biggest power of Notion comes in. Now, it is true over here that you can't really read what a lot of this says because it's very small. Now, I could move this content calendar over here and you'd be able to see it a little bit better. But even here, it's not super big. But what I could do is I can just click on any of these things and I can see, oh, this is the August notebook challenge. And here's all the things that needed to go in that notebook challenge. So I'm able to see it here in my personal notion and I can just get an at a glance of the calendar. But when I click on this, I can also go into Heartlandia, which is uh, Renee's like team space. And I can click on my content creation hub and I can also bring it up here. And this is that same exact calendar, just with a bigger page. So this is one of the things I love. So here we're gonna walk through exactly how I have it set up. There's only two sections on the main content hub. There's the planning dashboard, which has these little cards here for each of my content buckets. And then there's the calendar itself. The calendar is at a view where I can see social media posts, YouTube videos. I can also choose which properties I want to show up on the calendar. So for here, I've chosen the title I've chosen which bucket it's in, Heart Breathing's YouTube or Sarah Cannon YouTube or whatever. And then whether or not it's been done and whether or not Renee is completed with her part too. That is one of the ways that we can communicate with each other that she could see that I might say, oh, my Notion thing is done. She comes in on Monday morning. She can see that it's finished, but she knows she hasn't done her part. Then she can just open up this page and do whatever she needs to do. So we'll walk through that in a second. So here on the planning dashboard, I have cards and this is a gallery view. And like I said, one of the things you can do with every single database in Notion is you can actually click on this three dots here and you can go to layout and you can choose any of these layouts. So I've chosen gallery because aesthetically I want to be able to see pretty pictures and make it look nice. But you could also just have it in a list view here and it would just list them like this. Or you could put it in a table or a Kanban board or however you wanted to do it. So I've got it obviously on gallery and it just reset my... <laughs> Uh, hold on. So I have mine on gallery, like I said, because I want to see aesthetically like these little cards. So each one of these cards will open into a page that then has all the information that I need for that content bucket. And you can take your personal social media and content calendar and separate it into whatever buckets make the most sense for you. So I have two brands. So I wanted to make sure that I kept them in buckets that made sense for having two brands without it being so many that I had a lot to keep track of. If you have one single brand, like a pen name, and then you also have an Instagram, a Facebook, and a Goodreads account. You could keep those separate and have those be your buckets, or you could just say YouTube versus this. It doesn't matter how you do it. The functionality is the same. I've chosen to do Heart Breathing's YouTube and Heart Breathing's socials all go into one bucket because a lot of times if I post something on Instagram, I'm also posting it on Facebook and that content becomes the same. Then I have a Sarah Cannon YouTube, which my channel, Sarah Cannon, just got to 10,000 subscribers. If you want to come follow me over there, usually we're doing mostly live streams on that channel, coffee chats, things like that. Then I have a Sarah Cannon socials one. And then I also, you can see, have a Sarah Cannon newsletter. I do not have a bucket for Heart Breathing's newsletter because my Heart Breathing's newsletter mostly goes out when I have a YouTube video. My Sarah Cannon newsletter, though, is separate from my social media and YouTube, so I have it separately on here as well. So in my workflow, what I like to do is down here in the content calendar, I can see at a glance everything that has been scheduled out, everything that has a date. So I'm planning for this video, my content hub walkthrough to go up on the 15th. Let's say it didn't get done in time and I needed to push it back to the 16th. I can just take this little card and I can move it on the calendar. That will also change the publishing date here inside to the 16th. So that is really nice that I can really flexibly just move stuff around wherever I want it to go on the calendar. 
But I also needed a place to keep track of ideas that weren't scheduled out yet. So that's where these planning dashboard cards come in. So I'm going to click on Heart Breathing's YouTube and I have it set to open in a full page here so that I can see it in a full page. And there's only two main parts to this particular page. And what's cool about it is that both of these parts, the idea brainstorm where I have a little Kanban board and the content calendar are really just alternate views of the master calendar filtered out and changed the view. So this is obvious. It's the same content calendar that we had on that homepage, except it's now filtered to only show things that are tagged for Heart Breathing's YouTube because that's the card that we're in. But interestingly, this is also pulled from that same content calendar. So here's a table view of it. For example, here's just a list of all the videos that I have listed over here on the calendar, but I put it into a Kanban board so that I can see what are just ideas, meaning they're not on the calendar yet because they, they're just ideas. What are things that I know I want to create? What are things that are already scheduled, meaning it's already up on the calendar, but I just haven't started filming it yet. And then I have these hidden groups here, what's being filmed, edited, uploading, and what is already completed. And I created this again, I'll show you a complete walkthrough on how I actually did it, but I created this so that I have a place that I can keep track of all my ideas and my brainstorms and a place that I can go ahead and start planning out my content, my outlines, my YouTube, any images I want to use, stuff like that before it's even on the calendar yet. So the way this workflow works for me is if I get an idea of a video I might want to create or someone mentions something, oh, I wish you'd make a video on that. I can come over here and just click new and I can put a video up here so I can just give it a name video idea when it is just an idea and I haven't started actually working on the video yet. I just put this little light bulb icon on here. That is another visual cue that Renee can say, oh, I can see Sarah isn't even working on that yet. No big deal. When I know it's a video I'm going to actually make, like for example, I know I'm going to set up this Paquetto planner. I've talked about it before. It's going to be created. I just don't know when I can move it from idea over to, to be created. And I don't have to worry about it. I just know that when I'm going to look at my calendar for next week, which video do I want to create? Oh, let's go ahead and do this Paquetto planner. And it gives me that idea. When I know that I'm actually ready to start working on it, I might not be ready to schedule it yet but I might start working on it. So I can just click on it and it's going to open up into its own page where I can say publish date. I don't know yet because it's not scheduled, whether it's done, what type of content is it? it's going to be a video. What's the status? And this you can see correlates to that Kanban board. Is it an idea to be created scheduled or is it already in the filming process? And then we have a bunch of other things here that we could fill in, including graphics or anything that we might want to put in. I also have a video creation template that looks like this down below. So I can put in here title ideas, anything I want to go in the newsletter that goes along with that video, any pictures I want to take for the thumbnail, any B-roll video I want to take, and then an outline down here in the main points. Once I have changed this to a video I'm actively working on, Renee can keep an idea an eye on this particular page and she can say, okay, it looks like she's got the newsletter filled out and she can go ahead and be creating the newsletter using the thumbnail, putting it on social media and stuff like that before I even have to talk to her for the day. And that has saved us a lot of time and allowed us to really work together in a better way. So once I am ready to actually schedule this, I can just take this little card and go over here to the calendar and I can say, you know what? I think this is going to go up on the 31st because that's where I have a hole. So that's where it'll go. And now that it's actually scheduled, I can move it from to be created to scheduled and I can actually change this little light bulb here since it's going to be a planner. We'll change it to this little notebook image. And now Renee can know that I've already started working on it. Now, if I go into a video, uh, let me see if I can find one that I didn't use that template on yet. Okay, here's one. Let's say this video, my favorite books on writing. I don't have that newsletter and B-roll and all that down here because that's in a template here. So I would set up 
this template, I would just click video creation and it's going to auto populate all of that. And again, I'm going to show you exactly how to do that in my next video. But this type of thing is one way for me to not have to recreate the wheel every single time I'm going to create new content. It's all already here for me. This Heart Breathing's YouTube is exactly the same way I have set up my Sarah Cannon YouTube because they're both going to function the same way. But this way, functionally, I can keep track of any ideas I have. I can see when I've committed to creating them. I can go into here and I can start making ideas on what I'm going to create, any type of outline, any quotes I want to use, anything like that. And then I can schedule them out when I have moved this. So remember, I moved this Paquetto planner to August 31st. When I go back out to my main creation hub, there it is on the 31st. So these calendars are the same calendars, just in different places, which is really cool. And again, if I decided, oh, you know what? I've got something else I want to go up that day. I'm going to move it to Sunday. I can just move it and it will change it in all of those places. Like I said, my Sarah Cannon YouTube is set up exactly the same way, except for inside here, I have a different template. I don't think I have one that isn't filled out yet. So let's create one. So let's say coffee chat happens every Friday. So I have a little coffee icon. If I click on this and I come down here, I will use a different template for SC videos. And that's going to give me topics to talk about in the live stream any Q and a questions I want to answer and which thumbnail am I going to use? And then I can also tag this. Obviously it's auto tagged with Sarah Cannon YouTube because I'm creating it in this in this section here, but I could also throw a graphic here and I can also say the content type is going to be a live stream. So again, once I know this coffee chat would go in the next place, so I could go out to September and I would schedule this one for the 15th because that's the next one and then put it into scheduled and then change this little icon to a coffee. So obviously it's less important over here until I start creating other videos besides just the live streams. But for October, I do an event every year called the Spooktacular and there's going to be videos every single day. So this will become a very important idea hub during that time. And this will allow me to go ahead and start planning it and getting Renee to start working on it without any kind of friction between the two of us in terms of our communication. The next type or segment is my social medias. And we won't go super deep into this because I haven't actually started using it fully. Now I created all of these, but I wanted Renee and I to start working on one thing at a time instead of trying to do it all at once. So the first thing I created and we started working on was YouTube. Starting September 1st, we're going to start adding my social media to this. Now, one thing that uh, you can see here is that I've got the social media calendar at the top, but I don't have that same Kanban board here. I decided, and I might change my mind, but I decided I don't really need the Kanban board as much as I need the calendar when it comes to planning out my social media. The other thing I did want is a gallery view down here, because once I start adding in the thumbnail images or the real cover images, I'll be able to see how well they coordinate and I can actually kind of move them around or see if the colors look right together and I can plan out my Instagram feed right here in Notion. So for heart breathings, this actually includes Facebook, Instagram, and potentially YouTube shorts if I want to put a reel up on YouTube shorts. So let's say Monday, Wednesday, Friday is when I ideally want to have a reel go up on Instagram and a YouTube short. I can just put reel one, reel two, reel three. And then when I decide I'm going to start planning it for the week, I go in here, I give it a name, I say which content pillar it is, and we'll talk about that in video three. And then I have another template here. What's the caption? What video do I need to take that's going to go in this reel? What photos do I need to take? What hashtags am I going to use? Is there any like trending audio I want to use? And I could link it here as well. So this gives me a chance not only to plan it out, but also to just hand all of that over to my assistant and have her schedule it for me. And then maybe I don't know what I'm going to post on Wednesday and Friday, but at least I have a placeholder here in the calendar so that I can see that I need to create something. And that will be pivotal for my planning process. And I can give you guys an update on how this ended up working out once I've actually started using it more often. But for now, 
Now this one isn't filtered properly because it's still showing the coffee chats. But if I wanted to take YouTube off here and only see the social media, I could just filter it differently. So now I've just got like a idea on September 1st, I'm going to do an introduce myself kind of thing. Now on my Sarah Cannon socials, I do have a few extra resources here that I will be kind of fleshing out in that heart breathings one, which is my links. I have um, some spreadsheets here that have some social media idea, idea generations. I also have an idea generation tool that I'll share with you all in that third video about how I I help come up with what I'm going to post on social media, as well as links to my scheduling platforms. So all of that is here, right here in the content hub. I have literally nothing in the newsletter section yet, so I'll update that when I actually get moving on it. But that is an overview of how my social media planning is going and how I'm coordinating with my assistant here in Notion. So that is it for the walkthrough of my Notion social media content calendar. This is working really well so far. I'm excited to implement the social media side of it because I think it's going to take a lot of stress off my plate to have it a little bit more automated. And I can't wait to share that with you. Again, I will also have a full tutorial and, and walk you through every single step of setting this up. I know that Notion can sometimes feel a little bit overwhelming in terms of starting with a clean slate, but just remember that you don't have to set everything up and start using it all perfectly right away. You can do just like me where you set it up a way that makes you feel good. And then you start using one small piece of it. And if it doesn't work, you tweak it until it starts working and then you can add in the next part. So for now, YouTube is working great. I'm excited to get started with the social media scheduling part of it. Cause I think that is going to take a lot of stress and time off my plate and be able to get my assistant to help me out more and maybe even hire some someone else who can help out with that. It's going to be awesome. And I hope this has already given you some ideas. Let me know for sure in the comments, if you are using notion and found some of my other tutorials helpful and want to continue to see more of them, make sure that you're subscribed here. The planning content is not going away in terms of paper planning, but we're going to integrate some of it with notion. And I hope you enjoy that as well. So don't forget to check out that awesome deal from Mint Mobile and get your wireless service for just $15 a month, which I still can hardly believe. And be sure to leave your comment down below, hit a like on this video and subscribe if you have not yet. And I will see you in my next video. Bye. <laughs>